Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I've been so busy, guys. I am not even knowing what I'm doing here today. I'm telling you, I got to go find my... I didn't get to pull up my uh, thing I supposed to pull up. Sorry about that. But uh, I hope you guys really having a wonderful Tuesday. I had a real busy Sunday and Monday. So this is why I'm here now. Uh, but let me go ahead and try to find my... Oh, yeah, my... Um, did I put that down at the bottom? Oh, I did. Okay, I did put it at the bottom. I just didn't see it at the bottom. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and pull up my declaimer. Because we got uh, so many things are going on and uh, in the news right now. And so today, I'm going to be covering more news as I always do. Israel news. Uh, going to be recovering a lot of reports coming from Lewis in Florida. And something from BP Earth Watch. Uh, thank you. And I also have uh, reports coming from Betty Stevens. I meant to come on here, uh, I think it was Sunday, I'm not sure, uh, that she put something out I want to share. I know her husband has some other things out too. I will try to put that in the description box if I can think about it. Some things I, I say, sometimes I say I'm going to put things in the description box and I don't. So if you see me doing that, just email me and say, Marnie, you didn't put it in the description box. I'll be glad to send it to you, okay? Because sometimes I don't remember. Uh, and also, Carrie uh, Geddon has something uh, she's talking about that I'm interested in because I believe that we are going in a wilderness, going to have a wilderness experience before the rapture. And everybody talking about the pre-trip, the pre-trip, but I think we're going to go into a wilderness experience before the rapture. I really kind of think that. I don't know. I'm just thinking what I was shown one day uh, in the Bible. The Lord showed it to me about the wilderness. But today we're going to be talking about the wilderness, but guess what? We're going to get into Job today. And uh, I was praying the other day, and uh, Father led me to Job 2. I haven't even looked at Job 2 in so many years, I can't even remember, okay? Uh, so we're going to talk about Job 2. Uh, I know in Job 2, he's specifically trying to tell us that we need to hold on to him no matter what it look like, sound like, smell like, taste like, whatever going on in the world around you. We got to stand strong right now more than ever before because of all the things coming on the earth, tribulation, judgments, whatever, testing times that we never seen before. Uh, we're going to have to know he's the only true and living God, okay? He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through this fair use notice real quick. And so we're going to go into the Bible uh, in Job today. And I'm going to go uh, in the video with Maranatha, the angel of Revelation 18. The angel of Revelation 18. So we know we're going to have a lot of people going out being strong. A lot of people standing up right now. Standing up for their father right now. Walking out of jobs. Walking out of situations. Don't know how they're going to make it. What they're going to do. But they trust in Yeshua. Okay. And that's what we're going to have to do. Trust him no matter what. No matter what people. No matter what come your way. And I'm talking to myself too. Okay. Because I really. Boy I get so. I, yesterday I was so upset when I. I saw something on the news yesterday. It got me really upset. And it was this uh, guy on the news. And he was talking about. Uh, over in. Uh, I can never say that country. Um. Uh, Mass Cascot? Well, I'm not saying that right. Mad, uh, hmm? Madagascar. Madagascar. <laughs> Madagascar, whatever. And uh, so he was talking about the people over there, the Africans over there suffering. Uh, and they haven't, they say they never knew the people was, they never knew the people existed there and all this stuff. Never knew they was there. They out there living off cactus and living off whatever they can survive off. No water hardly ever. Uh, so they look, uh, she peeling the cactus, surviving off of it with all these groups of people. And I'm like, what do you mean you never knew they existed? What about the people we know who exist? What about the people we see every day in Africa and in India and all over the world in the third world countries who are having it really rough and tough? And then you go and try to send money to these people. They shut you down. They don't want you to have uh, access to send them money. So they shut you down. They say, oh, well, if you're sending money for Bibles, if you're sending money for uh, humanitarian uh, needs, 
If you're sending money for blankets, if you're sending money for food, you know, we, or we have to cut you down. They don't want you supporting these people. So I'm just saying, what, what do you mean you didn't know they, they existed? What about the people who are existing? Nobody want to do anything about it. So one day soon and very soon, everybody's going to be homeless. Everybody going to be outside. Everybody going to be scattered and not able to find any support, but in Yeshua HaMashiach alone. So that's why he said we must stand alone, stand for him, stand alone and stand strong. Okay. And I wrote something down this morning. I was praying and the Lord gave it to me and I forgot my husband have it over there. And I can't remember exactly what it said. It's something like, uh, he divined us, you know, he made us, he divined us, so he should know where to find what's going on with us at every time, every minute. He should be able to do that because he, de he designed us, he made us, and we should be putting our trust in him, people. Really, that's what it's about. So this video today is to encourage you, to encourage you, to encourage you, to encourage me. Oh my goodness. I'm just like, wow, people. So many people are homeless all over the world. So many people are dying. So many people are dying every day. I mean, I know personally, all through my channel and other assets and other places. Uh, and we know we just got to be ready to go home anytime, any moment. We can just die anytime. We don't know. So we need to give our life to Messiah Yeshua. Okay. So uh, let me go ahead and play the song Mia. And from me, uh, I was trying to look for my other song. I couldn't find it. If anybody know this song, send me an email. I've been trying to find this other song. I love it so much that me, I put out. She say, I wake up in the morning and I call Yahweh, something like that. And I could not find it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure Sharon uh, will hear my video and she'll send it to me. She, me and her keep up with me. Uh, but okay, we're going to go on over here now and get on, on with this video. I'm, I'm talking too much. I'm already six minutes. I'm wasting my time here. But I really had to just yell that out to you guys about the news yesterday because I am so tired of these people. This country is going down. I'm telling you that we're going to have so many things coming on this earth because you sure want us to take care of the poor, the widows, the orphans. And this is what exactly what we are trying to avoid doing. The nations, they don't want to take care of the poor, the widows, the orphans. They don't want to take care of the homeless. They don't want to take care of the people in destitution, okay? They want to stop them, cut them off from getting proceeds, from getting anything they need. They don't want them having it. They don't want them having it. So let's go ahead now and go over here now to um, the song. Let me go ahead and read it out. Sad, sad, sad people. Sad human beings. Sad, sad, sad.
Shalom, I'm Jonathan Hassan, the Editor-in-Chief of TV7 Israel, and I would like to personally invite you to join us for our bi-weekly Jerusalem Studio programs for a better in-depth understanding of Israel and its region. TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Tensions are rapidly rising in Israel as by the end of this week, Jerusalem's political stability is put to the test ahead of a looming deadline for a state budget. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announces Israel's 100-step plan to cut Israel's greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050. Iran claims parties to the 2015 nuclear deal are helping Tehran gain assurances vis-à-vis -vis Washington's intentions regarding the benefits that will emerge from a revival of the diplomatic track in Vienna. Tensions are rapidly rising in Israel, as by the end of this week, Jerusalem's political stability is put to the test. Merely two days ahead of the looming second and third parliamentary readings on the state budget bill, the fortitude of the exceptionally diverse minority government of Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and alternate Premier and Foreign Minister Yair Lapid will render whether the incumbent minority coalition manages to weather its seemingly wide-ranging ideological gaps on how to steer the Jewish state into still waters. It is important to explain that if the coalition fails to pass the state budget, which demands the support of 61 out of parliament's 120 lawmakers, the Israeli legislature, or Knesset in Hebrew, will be automatically dissolved and the state of Israel will be forced into yet another cycle of elections. Therefore, ahead of his trip to the climate summit in the Scottish city of Glasgow on Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett highlighted the necessity to withstand expected rhetoric and political spins by the opposition, which knows that their political future will be sealed for the next several years if the state budget successfully enters into law. <laughs> שילך ויעשה פרוע יותר מיום ליום בהתקרב המועד ההצבעה על התקציב. מרגע שהתקציב יעבור השבוע, זה קונה יציבות רבת שנים לממשלה. והמשמעות לאופוזיציה זה התפוררות והתפרקות לרסיסים. והם מבינים את זה, והם נואשים. הם נואשים להפיל את התקציב ולהוביל לבחירות. חמישיות. זו מטרתם. ולכן אנחנו צפויים לשבוע הפייקים הגדול. אין משהו שהם לא יעשו השבוע כדי להפיל את התקציב ולהוביל לבחירות החמישיות. אבל אני רוצה להרגיע את כולם. חבל להם על המאמץ. The Israeli premier further stressed the government's success in persevering a fourth wave of the coronavirus. Alongside exceptional economic growth, 
which forecast a positive upward trajectory for the State of Israel, would evidently meant to project assurances to all of his coalition partners to avert any scenario in which one of their members would succumb to pressures from the opposition to jump ship. I על הקורונה, על זן הדלתא של הקורונה, המדינה בשליטה, המדינה בצמיחה כלכלית של 7.1%. זאת הצמיחה הכלכלית הגדולה מזה שנים רבות. המדינה בכיוון טוב. לכן אני מבקש, ביוצאי מכאן, אני מבקש מחברי הכנסת של הקואליציה, תתנהלו באורח רוח. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is set to return to Israel tonight after three consecutive days of a marathon of sideline meetings with world leaders who have gathered in Glasgow for a so-called climate summit titled COP26. In his address to the summit, the Israeli leader announced his government's decision to implement a 100-step plan that would supposedly realize a proclaimed commitment to cut the state's greenhouse gas emissions to zero by 2050. Israel is at the beginning of a revolution on climate change. We recently started implementing our 100-step plan, which means that we're currently doing more to promote clean energy and reduce greenhouse gases than at any other time in our country's history. For the first time, Israel is committing to cutting greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050 and will phase out of the use of coal by 2025. While Israel's proclaimed plan does not in effect have any substantial impact on the global output due to its size, with its annual recorded emissions standing at 0.18% of the global share, Prime Minister Bennett insisted that the Jewish state has the capacity to serve as a significant contributor to the multilateral effort. If we're going to move the needle, we need to contribute Israel's most valuable source of energy the energy and brain power of our people. You see, this is what fuels our innovation and ingenuity. This is where Israel can make a real difference. Israel may be 60% desert, but we've managed to make it bloom. We may be in one of the driest places on earth, so we've managed to become the world's number one country in water innovation. As the country with the most startups per capita in the world, we must channel our efforts to saving the world. Behavioral change alone will only take us so far. We're going to need new inventions and new technologies that have not yet been even imagined. And this is why I call upon our entrepreneurs, our innovators in Israel and across the world. You can be the game changers. This same message was further conveyed to world leaders who met with Premier Bennett on the sidelines of the summit including the Prime Ministers of the United Kingdom and India, respectively, as well as the President of France, and with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who conveyed Canberra's aspiration to cooperate with Jerusalem on matters of innovation. You know, Israel has, has now uh, finally taken uh, big steps uh, to, and responsibility. We've set uh, our pledge uh, to zero emissions by 2050. Uh, it ought not to be a political issue. Uh, it's not between left and right. It's for, for really for our future. Uh, and uh, I think our unique contribution uh, is not our footprint, because we're a pretty small country, but really harnessing the energy of the uh, startup nation to, to saving the planet. And so I'm very much looking forward to talking about all of these issues with you. Well, if there's one thing Israel has proved to everyone, is that you can solve the hardest technology challenges. 
Um, whether it's in you know, water, uh, in particular in Israel, or the many other technologies you say the start-up nation. Australia sees it the same way. We also have committed to net zero by 2050, and we believe technology is the way that will be achieved because it just doesn't have to work in Australia and Israel. It has to work in Indonesia, India and Vietnam and the developing countries of the world. And uh, if anyone can crack this from a technology point of view, I think if Australia and Israel put their heads together, we'll get it done. It is important to know that Bennett also sees the opportunity to urge his Australian counterpart to move ahead with designating Lebanon's Iranian proxy Hezbollah a terrorist organization in its entirety, since Australia currently only blacklists Hezbollah's military wing as such. It is further worth mentioning that earlier this year, the Australian Parliament Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence and Security recommended that the Morrison government designate the entire Hezbollah organization as a terrorist entity. However, the Australian government has yet to follow through on this recommendation. Separately, on the sidelines of the Glasgow summit, Premier Bennett also discussed the Iran file with French President Emmanuel Macron, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. And while the Israeli leader is making evident efforts to voice Israel's genuine concerns related to Iran's nuclear activities and malign behavior in the region, among members of the P5 plus one, including the United States, France, Britain, China, Russia, plus Germany, the Islamic Republic of Iran is seemingly advancing its own interests by lobbying its closer partners that are party to the so-called JCPOA including Russia and China, as well as the European Union, as the nuclear deal's coordinator, to guarantee substantive benefits from any return to the negotiating table. The conversation is that the conversation is that the conversation is that the conversation is that the conversation is گفتگو می‌کردن و خب کشورهای چاره به اضافه یک یا برخی کشورهای اروپایی هم با امریکا که مطمئن بشیم که برگشت امریکا به به برجام با نیت درست و با شرایط و جزئیات قابل اعتنا انجام میشه. Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative. I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the Philippines in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tov Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Is Louis. Today is November 2nd, 2021, and welcome to the Grand Prix News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. We got some breaking news updates, and there are countries out there that are telling their people, their residents, to stockpile on food and water. Now, I know this is only for the Red Dragon, C-H-I-N-A, I'm using code words, but also here in America, they are saying that lights could go off to millions across the country this coming winter. So I'm hearing about, you know, all the prepping that needs to be going on. I'm hearing about winter coming up. It's going to be a really dark winter. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be cold. Uh, people are not going to have lights in certain areas. And it did happen in the beginning of 2021 when the 4-6 was in that well in the spotlight right texas saw lights off and uh it's so sad because uh downtown you know houston the lights was on right but the poor area lights were off it was so cold that the fist tank was ice cube they found uh some people like loved ones loved ones right in the bed frozen so i mean it was brutal and i do believe it's gonna happen this is why some countries are saying hey you better stockpile, you get uh, uh, get your food, if you had to get your heater, if you had to get candles, uh, do it now. This is the first time I'm, I'm hearing this. This is the first time that I'm hearing that some countries are telling people to stockpile on food.
they are going to be turning lights off. It's a, it, you know, there's a transformation going on and not too many people are waking up, but uh, they are trying to eliminate certain stuff, all right? Oil, gas, fossil fuel, and they, they, uh, they want everything to be transformed, right? Uh, it, it, it's, you know, everything is out there and, you know, people need to start prepping uh, sp spiritually, physically, and mentally. You have to be prepared um, because when they start trans, you know, changing everything around, it's going to impact people's lives. So um, we're going to see what's going on here. I haven't read the article. This could be a storm. This could be something. But all I know is that uh, a lot of people are prepping and uh, there's been a lot of reports that lights could go off. This coming winter before i start give this video a big thumbs up share this video November the 2nd, 2021. Guys, you're looking at current images starting yesterday going up to current time of our sun. This is from the SDO. We've had an Earth-facing solar flare, another one, this time in the northern hemisphere of the sun. This was the one we watched coming around from the left corner. And the one that gave us the solar flare the other day is now turning to the right, still kicking off those flares. See at the bottom right corner of this? But this one sent an Earth-facing um coronal mass ejection and if you remember they said that uh, the cme that we dodged the other day a couple of days ago sunday i think um it went slightly south of the earth the largest section of the plasma cloud now this one is in the northern hemisphere of the sun not the southern hemisphere so that may change the direction of the cme as far as going north or south of our planet Looking at it again, SDO images, a different camera. And you're going to see in the top right, guys, there was a large filament release. And then in the center, you're seeing a very long uh, solar flare. It wasn't an X flare. It was a strong M flare. But it lasted a long time. And the longer that it lasts, the longer the ionization happens in our atmosphere. But what you're seeing there in the center, there's a flare the coronal mass ejection and the magnetic canopy of the sun pulls back some of that explosion watch it right here there's a flare and then you see that area of the sun expand out that's called a secondary flare or a hider flare as that the uh, gravity of the sun of the magnetics pull part of that explosion back to the surface it re-erupts sends out another burst of, of uh, photons now, this happened in the early hours of the morning, and again, it's strange that it was put up. This is just a screenshot. I can't uh, play it because they took it down. But in both charts, the green lines represent Earth, and you can see again on the 4th, 0600 hours. That's about uh, midnight um, on the coming out of the 3rd on the East Coast. So that's what we're dealing with. Right now, we're dealing with higher wind speeds than we did during the last CME, they said. And so I don't know exactly where that's coming from, but we're over 600 kilometers per second, and that's about 1.4 million miles an hour. Stereo ahead A also picked up this explosion, and to the right of that is where the Earth is. Here's our current solar wind. Check this out. 594 coming up with 611. And you're easily, once you get over that 600 mark, you're approaching 1.4 million miles an hour. And so we're starting to see a rise in some of the quakes, so pay attention to that. Also, the temperatures in the green chart, it rises with the solar wind. It says, yet another solar flare, sunspot AR-289, is directly facing Earth, and it just exploded. An M1-class solar flare rocked the sunspot's magnetic canopy on November 2nd. It was a slow flare, uh, flare starting at 300 UT and lasting for hours. Solar flares do one thing very well. They produce CMEs. This one probably hurled a CME in the general direction of Earth. Confirmation awaits fresh data from SOHO coronagraphs. Stay tuned for that later today. Now, switching to um, La Palma, guys. This was overnight, and uh, the jetting continues, the lava flows continue, but they have, uh, the lava flows are not only continuing, they're intensifying, and we're getting close to an eruption on that northern vent that we're seeing that's continuously smoking. I think the lava is getting very close to the surface there, so that may be what we're going to see next. 
this is a breakdown that goes back to October the 18th, but it's showing to the right. This is the three main vents on the left, but this one right here is the one we keep seeing it smoking. That's the furthest to the north. It's 300 meters from that main crater number two. And it, notice the one on the right has not reached the surface yet. It's just heating it. But there's lava flows that are going to be uh, appearing all over. We're going to take a look at some drone images. We saw that in the last video we did, but check this out. That, lo that section right there was a big hollow cavity that is now full. Remember that, guys? It was just dropping off into like a pit from hell. But it's completely full and overflowing down those channels. This is a result, in my opinion, of the uh, heating of the core be all the solar activity that we're seeing, the elevated wind speeds, radiation storms going into the core. And uh, as many people have said, and it looks like it's like the blood of the planet, but it's very more, um, very much uh, more active today than it was yesterday. These are images today. It's now night there, but check this out. Definitely an increase in the lava flow. And as I mentioned yesterday, there were places that are 40 meters high as far as the lava. You know, man, that's 120 feet, 12 stories. And each time you see an eruption like this, it uh, probably adds a few feet, but it uh, causes it to channel in different directions and move out off the edges of this in some cases. And that's why we're seeing the continued threat to some of the downhill villages there. But guys, I wanted to update that. We're going to be watching on the 4th. Uh, we also saw that filament eruption. So there could be an increase in uh, earthquake activity over the next two days. Definitely the uh, lava flows are increasing. And the earthquakes are up on La Palma also today. So keep an eye on that. We're going to watch for that rear vent. If it starts to erupt again, you're going to have some lava spill in a different area. And that may widen that path of... Uh, of destruction towards the Atlantic Ocean. We're watching it. You watch it, guys. It's a heads up. Be safe. Now, my name is Luis. Today is November 2nd, 2021, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. I want to show you the title to this article. Now, check this out. Texas National Guard has arrested tens of thousands of illegal immigrants at Mexican border. Now, I heard there are a thousand more National Guard that will be deployed. And for those of you that don't know, there is a huge migrant caravan. We are talking about the mother of all caravans that is forming and is heading to the Mexico and U.S. border. Now, the governor of Texas, uh, Abbott, has deployed more National Guards, and there are thousands out there. Uh, give me a second here. Let me just show you something else. Um, so this is, uh, this, is, this is something very, very, very important, and the news, media, uh, the news media is not even talking about this. I mean, there's only a few people talking about this, right? Uh, so Texas Governor Greg Abbott responds to criticism. He's not doing enough to stop border surge. But it says here, uh, the governor made an appearance on Tucker Carlson's show on Fox uh, News Thursday not, uh, night, excuse me, saying Texas has 6,500 National Guard members and state troopers on the border. Now, there's going to be a lot more. Trust me, there's going to be a lot more. When those migrants' caravans come, the mother of all migrants' caravan, right? They, you know. When they come, they're going to see a whole bunch of National Guards. Now, here's the thing. You got the man, the 4'6", Mr. Joey. He's doing absolutely nothing, nothing about the crisis going on at the border. So you have the governor. He's deploying a lot. And uh, hopefully, you know, people get the message. And the people have every single right to defend this country. All right? This is not a, a club. This is not no, no stuff like that they, that you could just come in and then... Say, hey, I want my money and I want my respect and this and that. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You want to come to America, seek for asylum, do it the proper way. Uh, but again, we we have a whole bunch of lawlessness and the spotlight that is allowing these people to, to just come in and just bring in everyone. Come on in, just come on in and stuff like that. This is why you have numbers going up in various places because a lot of these people don't even take the prune juice. 
So big shout out to Texas National Guards. They are, uh, give me a second here. I know they're sending more troops, right? And I think it's somewhere in this article. All right, so we're gonna see what's going on here. Now, before I start, give this video a big thumbs. from off grid desert farming with paul and adrian so we got some new breaking news coming uh from australia that they are training the military to go to door to door uh forcibly under gunpoint to give them the demon juice so just remember folks this is not the mark this is not the mark this is not the mark of the beast say it over and over again till your head falls off or blows up Folks, we've been telling you this for over a year. It is the mark of the beast that he calls us all to receive it. You can refuse it, though. You know, you can refuse it. But this is what's happening in Australia. Let's go ahead and listen uh, to this video. Then I will leave the link uh, so you can. I'm currently serving soldiers who are reaching out to us who are saying the generals in Australia, our leadership, are forcing us, they're training us to go house to house on our training on, on our training grounds in urban warfare and we're practicing pulling people out of their houses with medical staff force injecting them and then we're practicing running into the bush and catching those people who are running away what the fuck is that about i'm sorry for swearing but what is no, that about? no 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 a hundred percent we That's got to training our military to attack our citizens in our own country are you kidding me that no. they are so scared and they're like, we've got to get rid of these people. They are evil to the core. To the core. So this report's coming from Hal Turner. I will leave the link. Folks, but, you know, this is happening. Uh, the Bible does not say anything about a precursor. There's nowhere in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it says that they're going to do this for a precursor. This is the mark of the beast because they are mandating this all around the world and without it you're not going uh, to be able to buy or sell so open up your eyes pull your head out of your your rear end and accept the fact that the mark of the beast is here and it will be coming around the world just like in australia uh, uh sooner than you think folks this is all happening right now on november the 1st 2021 the mark of the beast is here and uh, Australia is probably one of the worst countries, but it will eventually filter out, uh, and they will be doing this around the world uh, for people that refuse. So God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without it. Bye-bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know all this stuff going on is part of the beef system. You know, it is part of the B system. Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys hear what Betty is saying. And then I'm going to get to Carrie Geddon. Uh, but I don't like the F word. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, use the screen stuff. But I didn't, I, you know, normally off-grid desert farming don't use anything like that. But that's okay. You know, I understand people getting upset and all these things. But it's not coming from Marner, okay? I would never use those words. I don't like using those words. I don't like hearing those words, okay? But uh, I'm going to go here and uh, let you hear Betty, and then I want to announce something for you, announce something to you right now before I forget about it. I better do it now because I forget. This is a movie that I shared with a lot of you guys, uh, the Mully movie, okay? Uh, Mully movie English with subtitles uh, coming from Africa. Uh, this brother, uh, it's a success movie, guys, okay? Something you might enjoy. I've got comments already that they really enjoyed the movie. So I hope, you know, sometimes you want a good movie to watch. Something going to be, uh, uh, you know, something going to be encouraging. Uh, and so this is a real good story about a man who had a dream in his head about helping his people. So uh, I will leave it in the description box. You guys can see it. And I think I'm going to see it the second time. I, my daughter sent it to me, and I'm going to see it for the second time, but I'm going to watch it tonight again. But I'm telling you guys, it's time to really be able to do what you can for the widows, the orphans, the poor, and 
to get ready, to get ready, to get ready. Because, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited as I ever been in my life about all these things happening. Uh, to put the devil to a lie. He's a lie and the truth ain't in him. And the, these, uh, our Bible, uh, our Bible, uh, what, people here, they knew what they was talking about. Daniel, Jeremiah, Israel, Isaiah, uh, all these guys, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, they knew what they were talking about. And all the other minor prophets. And all these things are coming to pass right before us right now. So we need to be always giving your life to Yeshua HaMashiach. Faith is what? Forwarding all issues to heaven. Okay, forwarding all issues to heaven. Uh, so I just know that I don't want to have nothing to do with these people. As I love this his statement here. I get asked, what religion are you? I tell them, I'm not a religion. I'm a nation. I am Israel. What will the kingdom of God look like? There will be one people, Israel, one law, the Torah, one king, Yeshua. Hallelujah. Isaiah 2, 3. Many peoples will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths, the law, the Torah, we go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I think Mina uh, Carey going to talk a little bit about the wilderness. So let me go on over here to uh, Betty right now. Uh, words uh, that she has to say to you. Uh, I'm telling you guys, we uh, we uh, uh, she put this out on uh, Halloween night. I call it Halloween. Uh, put it out on October 31st. So. Uh, let me go ahead and listen to it. Let me let you guys listen. Let me mute it out again. Um, what I'm doing here, I don't want to mess the wrong button up here. Let me do it. That's the wrong button. I didn't mean to do that one. Hold on. Make sure I didn't mess up something. Okay, hold on. That's still rolling. Okay, it's still ticking. Okay, good. I'm in trouble. So let me go ahead and uh, mute this out. Hello, everyone. Today is Sunday, October 31st. And uh, I know we're going to be entering a new month here tomorrow. So I wanted to give you the word of the Lord. I'm not going to take up much of your time. As with all things, pray, take to the Lord. Nation, nations rise. This is the word that I received. Nations rise, nations fall. Kings come, kings go. War, war is upon your land, at your door. At this very hour, all that you have, all that you have, all that you have heard is about to break loose. The earth shakes. Hell opens its gates to receive the unrepentant. Many stand looking from the four corners. What do they see? What do you see? What do I, the Lord, see? I say this, many will not see the kingdom of God. Many deaths will occur, and much separation will occur as well. Now, that was the end of that word. I'm going to give this other very short one, and the Lord was very precise about it. And this is why the medical pandemic, I'm, I'm just going to call it that. Um, most people call it the juice, the jab, and so on, and all the other stuff that goes with it. But this is why the medical this is what the Lord said, and this is why the medical pandemic is now raging and rising higher. And these are the scriptures that he left to go with that above statement. Revelation 18.23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were great men of the earth, 
for by thy sorceries, I'm going to say that again, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So the candle, let's go back here, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. That's the darkness that is now here. And I know that it has been, but it's much, much worse. And, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. That means voices will stop. Things will be at a standstill because all of this darkness that is now upon the earth, messengers will cease even in speaking for thy merchants were great men of the earth okay for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived that's what all this is going on in regard to the medical agenda all the nations were deceived that's what sorcery is and because of it they wouldn't hear anything else they wouldn't hear anything else because they were already deceived now i'm going to stop there and the lord had me go through a little bit so you will understand sorcery is a spirit okay it's an evil spirit i know because we've been doing very heavy warfare with spirits of sorcery deception divination it's witchcraft it also comes all demons come in clusters they do not come one at a time also trickery bewitchment enchantments all of these and you can look them up in a dictionary you can look them up in your uh, bible there's there's places there all of this is under sorcery and so let me just give you a key the Greek word for sorcery means, in 5331, the Greek word is pharmakia, and in that, we get all these other words, magic, black magic, wizardry, enchantment, witchcraft, all those things that make up the bewitchment of what is going on in these nations. And so the Lord was saying to me, that is why people can't understand. That is why we have this division. Because the nations, this division in regard to all this, um, as he called it, medical pandemic, and, and we know what all that ensues, and that's why. Because the confusion is there under the spirit of sorcery it also includes idolatry and the people were under a massive spell if you will like a trance and so now we are going to cut to the chase and the lord is warning now we see war at our do door out of all this sorcery and because the nations were deceived the lord said now you're going to see all the destruction, everything's at hand now. You're going to see, and 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 there's not a whole lot that he, as the bridegroom and the bride, will say, because many, which are messengers, will be silenced by the Lord. Now, some people are going to say, "Well, we were already told not to talk." Not that's fine. I'm giving what the Lord gave me to give. Everything has its place and order. And there's going to be things because of deception. People were under a spell. They were under something that looked right to them, looked like the truth, but the deception of sorcery was there. And that's what they chose. Now, we have to understand that the Lord is speaking, calling. 
many times, many of the people, and again, this is just a little tidbit that came from him, tend to put God in a box and make him and believe him to be what they want him to be, not how he really is, and not as the sovereign God in, in the way we perceive him. And so because of that, and because of deception, when things really start happening, there's going to be a lot of separation, separation, a lot of more confusion that we have now, separation in all things and people, whether you want to believe it or not. Many will fall back, he said, into perdition, which is meaning they will pull back, their beliefs will change, their their physical bodies will change. I mean, even those that may believe that they're going to be strong in the end times with the way things will go, it will only be God that takes us through. It will only be the Lord that brings us through. He is our hope in all of this, but we will go through a lot of things. And he will be with us to bring us through it. It is the only way in time that the church will greatly increase during the time of persecution. Praise the Lord. So I just wanted to bring that to you. I am not going to say much. You can uh, look up scriptures. It was Revelation 18.23. There's also some scripture regard to witchcraft and sorcery and all that, idolatry, Galatians 5.20, Isaiah 47.9, and Revelation 9.21, just to name a few. But this is the reason the Lord wants the people to know in all nations why this happened and why it will continue. So with that being said, I will say God bless all of you. Um, also, I want to remind everyone, if there is someone that you need to bring the gospel to, bring, open up your place or open up wherever you can. We are in the, the call. The call is here right now. I mean, people do not recognize how fast things are and that things are moving along much faster. Time has been much more accelerated. We are further along than people think. However, people are going to believe what they want to believe. Sorcery is a very horrible thing. And that spirit is running rampant in the church and outside the church. It's in all nations. Deception. So, ready for salvation is all I can say if there's anyone that is even wanting to give their life to Christ, or if you have at one time and now you want to come back, he's here. Wherever you are, he's here. He's ready to receive you back. Believe what he has done on the cross. John 3, 16 and 17. Believe it. Receive it. Believe by faith what he did on the cross. Repent. Repentance is very important. Just believe. Believe by faith. Take it by faith and come back because he will be your safety. He will be your hope. There's nothing else. And when everything else is gone or when everybody else is gone, he will be there for you. He is an ever present help in time of need. Please. Accept him now while you can. And then find a place where you can be baptized. And baptism is that point where you've acknowledged everything God has given you as far as repentance and forgiveness and help. And you're letting the world know or you're letting the public know that you are now his. So 
you know, I'm making it very simple because so many people make it very complicated. And then find a place of discipleship because discipleship is very important in these last days. All right. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope all of you have a very blessed day. And shalom, shalom. And this is your sister, Carrie Ann, in Jesus Christ. Okay, brothers and sisters. Um, I feel led in my spirit to just touch on the second exodus again. I have so much video. <laughs> I have so much videos on the second exodus. Please check out my playlist. I will leave it link in the description box concerning second um, exodus. All right. So... <clears throat> For those of you who are new, sorry, but it's itchy. For those of you who are new to this channel and you hear me talk about the Exodus, let me just give a quick, brief um, background of what is the Exodus and what is it that I'm talking about. So, brothers and sisters, there is going to be something called a regathering, a regathering of the true seed of Yah, of the true seed of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Amen. These are the 12 seeds of um, Jacob that has been scattered all over the world. Now, 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 the pharaohs and the wicked pastors and everybody um, conjured up a plan and they basically came together and say 1948, 1948, the most high Yah has um, Fulfill scripture. That's what they say, especially John Hagee, because he's a big Zionist. You know, um, they said 1948, the true seed of Yah have been regathered, and there they are down in Israel. So you look down in Israel and you think, oh, the second exodus have already happened. The regathering of Yah's people, those are them lot down there, the Europeans, it's them. Um, down there those are the true seed of Abraham so now because they're saying that the second exodus aka the regathering of Yah's people have happened it's done it's already happened 1948 so you can look forward to the rapture they said Jesus Christ of Nazareth the biblical Christ is coming back any moment now because Israel has been regathered well yeah, I have news for those of you who believe that theory. And mind you, brothers and sisters, when I was asleep, I did believe that as well. I always think that those people down in the so-called Israel, I thought they were the true biblical seed of Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Because the wicked pastor shove it in our faces every day. You got people like Donald Trump who, you know, big on Israel and everybody else who's big on Israel. So it's in your face. You, you just think, oh, let's just go with the crowd. But when you become a walker in the spirit of Yah, remember he is the spirit of truth. Remember the spirit of Yah is a spirit of truth. And he will not lead you into any deception once you are walking with him. Okay? So... Basically, brothers and sisters, the 1948 political state, Israel, it's not them. The 1948 regathering, look at my finger. I'm so sorry, I've cut my finger, brothers and sisters. Yeah. So the 1948 regathering, all right? <laughs> the 1948 regathering of the political state, Israel. It was not by the mighty hand of Yah. Yah has nothing to do with it. He has zero to do with it. The 1948 was a regathering by the monarchy, the British monarchy, the American, the, 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 Sp the Spaniards, Spain, France, Germany, Arab nation, and whosoever else you want to chuck in there. They're the ones who came together and formalized this political state. And they call it Israel. And they get a bunch of people from Europe and shove them down there and tell us that this is it. 
that's that's the true Hebrew Israelites. That's what they're saying. They don't call them Hebrew Israelites because I think that if they call them Hebrew Israelites, it's going to be too much. So they call them Jewish. But we know them as the biblical, not them, but we know the Bible calls the the, the nation of, of Israel Hebrew Israelites. But if you notice, the wicked pharaohs, the wicked pastors, they don't call them Hebrew. They call them Jewish. And when they should call them Hebrew Israel, but they can't do it because they know it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be too obvious. So they call them Jewish people, right? Okay. So, okay. So now we know that the 1948 regathering of the so-called political state Israel, it is not them. And so therefore, if Yah has not regathered his people, which he said he's going to do, it is biblical. So in a sense, the wicked pharaohs and the wicked pastors, they are correct with the regathering of Israel. They're, they're correct. Don't get me wrong. They're right because they know scripture and they know that Yah has to regather Israel, the biblical seed of Abraham, a second time. I said second time because the first regathering was Moses. Moses, Exodus, you know that story. That was the first Exodus, the first regathering, all right? So he's going to do a second one, all right? So like I said, the wicked pharaohs, the wicked pastor, they know the truth. They, sp they speak truth and lies. So they know that Yah is going to regather. But guess what? Instead of telling the world the truth, about who the true Hebrew Israelites are, that is to be regathered. They said, oh no, mm -mm. we rather formalize and build a state and put some people down there and lie to the whole world. But anyways, so that's the little backdrop concerning the second Exodus. So now we know that the 1948 and the Europeans down there in the so-called Israel, they are not the true seed. It's not them. They are not Hebrew Israelites. They are Jewish. They are Jewish. They are not the Hebrew Israelites, the seed, the descendant seed that Yah is going to regather. Because you have to fulfill Deuteronomy 28 to be in the regathering. You have to fulfill Deuteronomy 28. Read the whole scripture, brothers and sisters. So, now we know that the true seed of Yah is not them lot. So, the 12 scattered tribe of Jacob, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is all over the world. So, you might say, oh, Sister Karen, who are they? Who are these people? If it's not them down there in Israel, who are these 12 scattered tribe all over the world? Well, I don't want to go into too much um history because i need to talk about the second exodus right but basically the 12 scattered tribes are uh those people who went into slavery who the slave masters went down into africa and the transatlantic slavery took place and the hebrew israelites some of them were scattered all over africa they're down there if you want to know where the hebrew israelites are the seed the true seed of Yah, the true seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, look down in Africa, they're there. The ten scattered tribes are still there. They're there. And Judah, okay, Judah, because this is, this is biblical, Judah, the Lord said he's going to disperse Judah to the four corners of the earth. So mostly, really, Judah has been scattered uh, most of them are in the United States of America. They call them African Americans. They don't know what to call them. They used to call them blacks. They call them coloreds. Also, no, they're sticking with African Americans. Those are Hebrew Israelites. I'm not saying all of them are. Not every single black people in the world are Hebrew Israelites. No, 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 no. No, they're not. So please get that straight. It's they're not. Not every black person in the world is a hebrew israelite but some of us share the same skin color so it's a bit tricky isn't it but anyways so so 
some of the Hebrew Israelites scattered all over Africa, all over the place. A very strong, a very, a very, 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 very strong population of Hebrew Israelites. These are the true seed of Yah. They're in Congo. Very strong population. Maybe majority of the Congolese are Hebrews. They're Judah. Nigeria is the same. Very strong population of Judah is in Nigeria. Levites, they're in Nigeria. That's where they are. Now, concerning America, the Caribbean, you know, it, it's scattered. Judah scattered there along with Benjamin and some Levi, but the most tribe that has been scattered it is Judah. So that's the true Hebrew Israelites. All right. Now I don't want to get into skin color because people are going to say, oh, Sister Karen, what about some Chinese or the Hebrew? What about white people or the Hebrew? Some black. I'm not getting into any skin colors. Why? Because the tribes are mixed. And that's why only Yah can do the regathering. Because he knows that people will mix up, mix up, mix up, mix up. He knows. He knows. Everybody, not everybody, but some people are mixed. And you got very, 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 very next to white Hebrew Israelites. Because everybody, it's just a mix up. So this is the reason why the most I, yeah, is he has to do the regathering. It cannot be man. It cannot be your prime minister. It cannot be the wicked pharaohs and your pastor. No, it's got to be by the mighty hand of Yah. And that's the reason why you've got to pack your bags. Because the angels are talk about this. The angels are coming for you. So when the angels turn up, wherever you are, be ready. Because they are coming. And the second exodus, it is at the door. This is the restoration of, of the true seed of Yah, Israel. That has been scattered and mistreated all over the world. Yah is going to regather. Because, you know, we are the promised people. We are the apple of Yah's eyes. Not them locked down there in the 1948. It's not them. It's not them, brothers and sisters. They, they've tricked you. And this is why I keep on saying to brothers and sisters, the, the, the rapture, we call it the rapture. We'll stick with the rapture. The rapture ain't coming. If you think that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming any moment now, that's a lie. There's no such thing as pre-trip. Because the second exodus must happen first. It has to happen first. And it hasn't happened. And I know that the wicked pharaohs have lied to you and the pastors. And they told you that the second exodus, the regathering, 1948, it's a lie. It's a massive lie. It's not them. It's not them. And, um, and so the second exodus can only happen by the mighty hand of Yah. Only by him. Only by him. And that's why angels 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 are going to come for you and when they come you're going to know so you've got to be ready get your bags packed somebody was saying to me sister Karen, what do we put in our bags well i don't know you might say to me oh sister Karen, we're going to the wilderness where's the wilderness nobody knows except the angel and yeah because they're the one part of the journey will be physical Part of it would be physical, which means that if we have to take plane, oh, Sister Karen, what about the you know what? What about the heat tea and the pudding? We can't take in the plane. Don't worry about that. That's the least. You're with angels. Don't worry about that at all. Just make sure your bag is packed. Water, um, non perishable food, blanket, maybe a sleeping bag boot like hiking boots we can get hiking boots and stuff like that you know you can't wear you know depends on where you're going you know you need proper shoes um because we're going to do a bit of traveling and stuff like that now in terms of the journey is it a one-day journey i don't know brothers and sisters in my spirit i don't know why i just feel it's a three-day journey i don't know why wherever we're going to go the final place, which is the wilderness, which is prepared by Yah for the 12 scattered tribe. 
um I don't know why I'm I'm thinking it's going to take us three days to get there. It may be less. It may take a day. I don't know. But in my spirit, I need to confirm that with the Lord. But I'm getting three days. It's going to take us three days to get to the wilderness that's prepared by Yah. All right, guys, I'm going to stop there. This is a 21-minute video, but you guys can go here to other five, six minutes, okay? Uh, I'm going to get into the Bible, but, yeah, I think a wilderness experience is possible I, because I have my own revelation about it, and the Lord gave me some stuff in Scripture uh, talking about it uh, way before I even knew Carrie was going to talk about it at all. Uh, but I don't know. I just know I don't believe in a pre-trib. I don't believe in that, so... Never believed in that. So we got a lot of things going on right now. And we got tribulation. I think uh, my friend Byron Searle, he said that the father showed him in September that the tribulation has started. I don't know. I just know we're watching and praying and looking and uh, learning. And you have to pray and ask the Lord to show you things on your own. But uh, he was saying that because we had uh, the things going on in uh, Chile, uh, the things going on in Haiti, you know, the Americans are being uh, in captivity there. And then we got Americans in captivity by the thousands, I heard, over in uh, Agavistan. So it's like part of the tribulation beginning. So uh, a lot of people prophets out there thinking is we are in the tribulation time. I, I, you know, I just know that we are in judgment. I know judgment is great before us. So we're going to go into Job now and let Job talk about it. Because this is what the father showed me the other day about Job. I mean, he took me to Job and he's showing me that we're going to have all these testing times coming before us. And we're going to have to stand strong, people. We cannot lean down to these people. We cannot take what Betty was talking about. It's true. I love that woman, how she talked, how God showed her things. Because it's true, it's true, it's true. Witchcraft, sorcery, pharmacia. Uh, all these things go together hand in hand. Sorcery, okay? Uh, so if you haven't really picked up on that yet, my daughter even picked up on it. I was really shocked because she said, Mom, if it's happening all over the world, it made me think about the Bible. It made me think about end times. Because why does everybody have to have the thing this all over the world? Because the whole world will wander after the beast system. Absolutely. So we need to be understanding uh, we are in the end at the end. Uh, Father, be with us as we go to Job 2 right now. We thank you for your word. As we know, one day it's going to come a time when the people are hungry, are in famine, not for food and bread, but for your word. Your word, as you, Betty just said, our mouth's going to be sealed. You're not going to even allow us to speak. So, you know, it's going to come a time when people are going to be looking, walking to and fro, uh, trying to search for truth. And they denied it before, and he said because they denied it, he will give them a lie. He, you know, he's not going to even give you the opportunity to find truth anymore because you don't even want to hear it from the beginning. So this is the time for salvation. This is the time for you to make up your mind who you're going to serve. So I'm going to go ahead and let you read. Uh, thank you so much for coming to help me today to read. Tell the people hello. Anytime. Hello. <laughs> hello, everybody. And uh, so people really... Uh, this is serious times before us, uh, so go ahead and let's read Job here. Can I make a comment? Yeah, on make this a comment. Uh -huh. Skin color thing. Skin it, color thing. Skin color is a non-issue in the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. There's maybe uh, one or two places where a black guy is even mentioned. You know, as far as a skin color of a black. Person. The father is interested in everybody, and yeah. we are in ethno-linguistic groups, people groups, mm -hmm. ethnic nations, ethnic peoples, mm -hmm. different people groups. That's why I like, I am Israel. Ethnicity is what the Bible talks about. Israel. It doesn't I talk about skin Israel. color. Skin color is a non-issue. Skin color is a racist issue that modern people have come up with <laughs> to cause problems. <laughs> so where were we? Oh, Joe. Yeah, Joe. we all have to be born again, all of us. Yeah. That's why I say we're Israel. You're part of Israel. You're engrafted in if you are part of Israel. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Then it was the day when the sons of the Almighty came to present themselves before Yahuwah. Satan also came with them to present himself before Yahuwah. Yahuwah said to Satan, From where have you come? Then Satan answered Yahuwah and said, 
from wandering on the earth, from going back and forth on it. Yahuwah said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there was no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears the Almighty and turns away from evil. He still holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. <laughs> Satan answered Yahuwah and said, Skin for skin, indeed, a man will give all he has for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bones and his flesh, and see if he does not curse you to your face. <laughs> Yahuwah said to Satan, See, he is in your hand. It is only his life that you must spare. Yow, that's going to hurt. Then Satan went away from the presence of Yahuwah. He struck Job with severe boils from the sole of his feet to his head. Job took a potsherd to scrape himself with, and he sat down, sat down in the middle of the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse the Almighty and die. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of foolish. But he said to her, You talk as a foolish woman talks. Should we receive the good from the Almighty and not receive the bad? In all this matter, Job did not sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that had come on him, each of them came from his own place. Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite. They set a time to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. When they lifted up their eyes at a distance, they did not recognize him. They raised their voices and wept. Each tore his robe and threw dust into the air and upon his own head. Then they sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. No one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Wow, do you think you got any friends like that today that would even spend that much time with you? You got any friends like that today, people? Not Committed too many, huh? to you like that? That's, um, that's some true friends there. I tell you, I feel like I have some true friends in this in this ministry. I tell you, the people that Yeshua have sent us in this ministry for supporting us all these years and months and never shook my hand, never kissed my lips, never hugged my neck, and just trusting and believing because I am a child of God, and they have really uh, had an opportunity to support the widows, the orphans, the homeless. I'm really just happy for you guys out there. I really am. I pray for you guys day and night, every day, okay? And I really appreciate you guys. I do. I put angels around your households. I, I really do. Because, you know, you don't have many true friends today at all. You do not have those. But I'm telling you now that this message is talking about what we're going to go through. And we're going to have to learn to stand strong and not to be, let people tell us what to do, how to do, where to go. Oh, yeah, let's walk away from God. There's nothing happening. God's not saving us. Oh, he's not here to deliver us. Oh, why are we going through this? And why are we going through that? And oh, if he was the God of God, all gods, if he was the true God, he would do this and he would do that. And he wouldn't allow us to go through this and he wouldn't allow us to go through that. That's what you're going to hear, people, from coming. That's what Job is saying. His wife said to him, okay? Oh, wow. Oh, yo, God. Oh, where? your God. Oh, why don't you just curse God and die? Oh, why don't you just give up? Oh, why don't you just throw it in the fire? Oh, just throw your towel in. Forget it. Forget this God. This is what you're going to hear, people. This is what you're going to hear. I'm telling you right now, this is what you're going to hear. Because he showed me in this scripture. I never had read this in a long, long time. Oh, my goodness. Never even knew it was in, in chapter 2, really, to tell you the truth. Uh, I'm just telling you, it's time to wake up and realize that Yeshua, HaMashiach, the man who made all living things, love you, care about you. He said we we're going to go through suffering. We're going to go through suffering because he went through suffering. He already told you if you if they did it to you, if they done it to you, they're going to do it. If they done it to me, they're going to do it to you. Whatever suffering you're going to go through, but you need to hold on to your salvation. Not give up, people. Not give in. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what Satan throw at you. You need to know your God is the God of all God and the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, and he's going to reign soon, very soon. And he say he he's will put his name, now. he will put his name in your forehead, his forehead. He will be the one to save you from all trouble, all hellfire. We need to trust in him no matter what, no matter what. He says sometime it's going to take 10 days, maybe some of us. It says seven days here, really funny. Uh, but you know... I've been seeing seven everywhere. That's why I was even uh, really amazed when I seen uh, uh, his friend sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. And I've been seeing seven, seven, seven all this month, all last month. Uh, I'm just telling you guys, we come into the end at the end. And so we need to know about it beforehand. 
Yeshua is showing us beforehand. In Matthew 24, he tells us beforehand. He tells us uh, immediately after the tribulation. And then these things are happening. The stars falling from the sky and, and the earth reeling and rocking like a drunk man. You're going to have all these things going on. Oh, Mari, I'm telling you guys right now, you won't be shocked, okay? You won't be amazed. You'll be happy. You should be happy that we're going home. We're going home, people. So don't let your family, friends, and all your jobs and all these things take advantage of you and tell you, oh, you're not going to be able to eat if you don't work and you're not going to be able to take care of your kids and, oh, you need to take this and get, get it over with. Oh, it's part of the system. It's part of the world. Everybody's doing it. Oh, you know, this is what they're going to tell you. Everybody's doing it. Guys, please. Please, please, please. I'm warning you. I don't know if this is my last video. I don't know. We just need to know not to fall for these people. Yeshua said you are all, they are all liars. All liars. You are all physicians of no value. No value whatsoever. Okay. So why are we following them? He gave us herbs. He gave us things to eat. He gave us things to, what to use for our bodies. I'm telling my husband can tell you, I could be sick so many days. I don't let it lie. I don't allow us to get sick. Okay. I go and take my stuff, my echinacea, uh, my vitamin C, I pump up on it, hop up on it, uh, whatever in the vitamin, well, lemon water, just drink a lot of it through the day and, and the night and just keep your immune up. Okay. Don't let these people tell you all these things, people. It's a bunch of lies, okay? I'm just telling you right now, it's a bunch of lies. So you want to believe what you want, but you can go and ask the Father on your own. Go ask the Father on your own. He's no respect of persons. If you go and take some time with him, he would take time with you. He would show you all kind of things. But a lot of us don't take time with him. We just want to listen to every video on the channel or every, list, or every person on YouTube, but we don't have our own testimony. We don't have our own reason why we believe. We don't, haven't been baptized, don't, don't know God, don't know nothing about him, just going by what people are saying to you. You got to have your own testimony. I'm telling you that, your own, okay? So uh, that's all I'm going to say today. I'm going to go. I'm going to go on over here now and clear this video because already, I'm already talking more than I want to. You can go listen to the rest of Carrie video if you like. I will put all this stuff in the description box. So let me go on over here and get to, uh, oh, and what is it at? Maranatha. Uh, we're going to go in here to Angel of Revelation 18. We are in Revelation. And Revelation and Daniel is so important now if you haven't read it. Matthew 24, Luke 21, Luke, uh, Mark 13, all those things kind of correlate together, but you need to understand, uh, it's time to really wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Stop living in la la land. This world is going away. Hollywood's going away. Everything's going, have you seen everything going on? Attacking Hollywood and the movie guy, everything's being attacked. We need to understand he want all these things out of your system, out of your mind, where you can really focus on him, people focus on him. Okay. It ain't about this world. This world's gone away. Oh my God, ain't you glad it's gone away? It's so filthy, so demonic, so all wicked. The idols are going I down. know all these children dying. Now they want to give the children the jab. Oh my goodness. I'm just praying away. I don't care if every truck turn over. I'm really, I don't need these things in my grandchildren's arms, my children arms, your children arms. We need to be really praying, 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 people. Pray with me on it that these things are destroyed, taken away. As we pray every night, Father, oh, get rid of every sex trafficking, drug trafficking, human trafficking, pedophiles, prostitution rings, pornography rings. Shut them down. Homosexuals need to repent before you, Father. It's just time to pray out loud like you never prayed before. And don't be afraid of these people, this man, the men, men, Pope of Rome, all these people who are over there doing their little uh, gatherings and, and they want to change laws and they're going to change many laws. But you need to not change your law that you know Yeshua is your God. He is the only God you shall serve. Okay, so let me go ahead now and go ahead and do this right now. I have to preach hard today, people, because I don't know if this is my last video. I don't. So let me go ahead and just preach that and then go here to, uh, let me mute this out, I'm sorry. Uh July 29, the angel of Revelation 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Revelation 18, 1. 
the prophecies in the 18th of Revelation will soon be fulfilled. During the proclamation of the third angel's message, another angel is to come down from heaven having great power, and the earth is to be lightened with his glory. The Spirit of the Lord will so graciously bless consecrated human instrumentalities that men, women, and children will open their lips in praise and thanksgiving, filling the earth with the knowledge of God and with his unsurpassed glory as the waters cover the sea. Those who have held the beginning of their confidence firm unto the end will be wide awake during the time that the third angel's message is proclaimed with great power. During the loud cry, the church, aided by the providential interposition of our exalted Lord, will diffuse the knowledge of salvation so abundantly that light will be communicated to every city and town. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of salvation. So abundantly will the renewing Spirit of God have crowned with success the intensely active agencies that the light of present truth will be seen flashing everywhere. There is to be at this period a series of events which will reveal that God is master of the situation. The truth will be proclaimed in clear, unmistakable language. As a people, we must prepare the way of the Lord under the overruling guidance of the Holy Spirit. The gospel is to be given in its purity. The stream of living water is to deepen and widen in its course. In all fields, nigh and afar off, men will be called from the plow and from the more common commercial business vocations that largely occupy the mind and will be educated in connection with men of experience. As they learn to labor effectively, they will proclaim the truth with power. Through most wonderful workings of divine providence, mountains of difficulty will be removed and cast into the sea. The message that means so much to the dwellers upon the earth will be heard and understood. Men will know what is truth. Onward and still onward the work will advance until the whole earth shall have been warned, and then shall the end come. Oh boy, oh boy, I can't wait. I can't wait for the total end to come. Oh yes. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. I just want to thank you guys. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need in mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, we was out with the homeless yesterday a little while. Uh, always good to see them and pray and encourage them and see what they need and what they want. Because it's getting cold in Colorado right now. We're going to have to try to work on blankets again probably. So uh, thank you so much for the donations. Uh, for, we have donation, uh, Tiley app, uh, cash app, uh, the bump card, uh, https colon slash slash juniormarner.thebumpcard.me. Uh, other donation options, fmcmi.org, marner.cam at gmail.com at PayPal. Uh, mailing your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Shipping address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Okay, so I really appreciate you guys uh, so much. I will put some other links in the description box. I know that uh, Common Sense Show, uh, Dave Hodges had some things I was going to talk about. It was too long to put on my channel today, but I will put some other links in the description box for you guys to look at. Uh, also, if you guys are interested in working from home, I told you to look in the description box, okay? Uh, there's two companies, 5PC Global, looking for consultants, uh, dealing with technology and all these things. Uh, and also... Uh, a sure for Life is a company, oh, I don't even want to say the name on here. Uh, anyway, uh, you can look into the description box. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, but you can look in the description box to see more about the uh, funeral um, funeral plans for your family at a reasonable, a reasonable price. And so I will talk to you guys on another video, but let me go ahead and go ahead and pray and end this video. It's, always a, it's already an hour and a half. I didn't know I was going to go that way, go that long today. But this might be my last video, I don't know, because I'm telling you, it's serious times ahead, and we need to be getting ready, seriously getting ready. Stop listening to me or other people. Know your God. Know who your God is. Worship him, and go in your closet, and talk to him, and ask him to show you things, 
and give you information out of the Bible, the word, because he will do that, people. No respect to the persons, okay? So you want to pray or you want me to pray? I'll pray. Okay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we know you're coming soon. We're going to send Yeshua back here. So we just ask you to cause and grant us the grace for more people to repent and turn from their wicked ways, Father, mm -hmm. especially your people. It's your people that you ask to uh, humble themselves before you and repent. Father, we know most people, according to the scriptures, Revelation says it plainly many times, that most people are not going to repent here in these last days. Mm -hmm. That's their problem. They're going to have a serious issue with Yeshua when you show up and that's their problem. Father, we pray for your people. Yes. Keep your people safe. Fill your people with your Ruach. Fill your people with your word. And thank you for renewing our hearts and our minds and changing mm -hmm. our lives. Because mm -hmm. there is no other way to live except with Yeshua and in Yeshua and Yeshua in us. And we bless you and we thank you for everybody that gets to view the video today. In Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate right. each and every one of you. And I'll see you on another video. So I'm going to say shalom. I love you so much. Shalom, right. shalom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.